It has been 83 days or a week shy of three and a half months since I left Late Bloomer Garden 1.0 and my home of 25 years and moved to this apartment. And I thought we might have a little chat and I'll let you know my thoughts on how it's going so far. So I hope you stick around. First of all, you're going to notice a few very specific things that I have put into this frame so that you know that they mean something to me. And they all have meaning and it all boils down to one word, one concept, friends, friendship. And my friends are the ones that have helped me make this huge transition in my life. And in this frame, you will see my mug of tea. And I have been saving this tea for a very special occasion, and this is it. And this tea was sent to me by Tracy Garns. She's a huge fan of this channel. She has a family farm in Pennsylvania. And her husband ferments, collects the leaves, and then ferments them and makes their own tea bags. Isn't that gorgeous? Handmade tea bag. Mmm, it smells wonderful. They sent me several of these tea bags uh, last year sometime. And this is my first try. So this has been steeping for a while. This is blueberry lemon balm. I of course have my mind on blueberries this morning because I spent about a half an hour at least <laughs> picking blueberries off of my two bushes. Now it would have taken a little bit less time had I not had the voile on there. I was working around the nylon netting, but if I hadn't had the nylon netting, I wouldn't have had the blueberries. I have a few of them here to enjoy during our chat. This is the best blueberry harvest I've ever had in my life. Last year I thought was great. This year's even better. Back to how it's going. <laughs> Let me try the tea. Mmm. Oh boy. I taste the blueberry and the lemon balm. That's that's delicious. Mm. And here I have comfrey balm and I have been working my hands really hard as you, if you've seen me putting storage systems together and gardening without help. And uh, this comfrey balm is, <laughs> I can't even tell you how good that feels. Oh, wow. That was made by my friend Olive. Things I've learned through this experience, because I literally have not lived in an apartment without my own washer and dryer since 1987. <laughs> Maybe before some of you were born. Like I learned in New York, old buildings were designed for people to live this particular building was built in the 1930s when they had families living here. I have a dining room. We have clotheslines on the top of the carport out back, a laundry facility in each building, and we can hang our clothes on the lines to dry if we like. And of course, most of the time it's clear here and not raining. So the sheets just smell incredible. I'm close to the ocean, so I'm very lucky. The transition from my house to here, like leaving my garden, has been actually less heartbreaking than you might think. I have this fan, Kevin, 
in Florida, and he's often telling me just to look forward and not look back. Uh, that advice sunk in. I have just been looking forward and dealing with the day-to-day. -day. Now, if you had said to me that I was going to be moving just before a pandemic, a worldwide, I mean, what's the chance of that? So not only am I, did I become a, an empty nester last year, and then, you know, had to get the house ready for, oh, that was so, oh, so overwhelming to get all of that done. And, you know, I thank God that uh, it, it happened when it did and it got done. If it had to happen, that it got done when it did. Let me just uh, clarify that statement. Okay. It would have been better to be in my house during the stay-at-home order because I would have had my garden and I could go out every single day and make a big mess if I wanted to. That wasn't the case and I was here and that has been balanced really by the warm welcome in this apartment complex. Of course I had very good friends that lived here before, they've lived here for a long time. I am Auntie Kay to their daughters. They wanted me here and they didn't want me in any, just any apartment. They wanted me in this apartment so we can look, look into each other's kitchen window. It is a journey. It's not a, really a transition. It's a journey. Life, all of life is a journey. You know, when we have children, we think, oh, wow, we're just going to have children for the, the longest time. And, you know, 18 years go by and they're gone. And you think, while it's happening, you think that 18 years is, is a long time. And, and after it's gone, you think, oh my gosh, that just went by like that. And now they're gone. And <laughs> um, I also wanted to point out these lovely flowers. Uh, these were given to me by my friend here in the building. You saw that in one of my videos, one of my indoor gardening videos. She gave me this too. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh. So, uh, in addition to moving, it was just unbelievable. I had the help of a very good friend. I haven't seen him since. If it hadn't been for Stan and V, Celine, who helped me there at the end? Oh my goodness. I couldn't have gotten out on the deadline because it just doesn't rain here very often and suddenly we're in three days of rain without Stan's help. I mean, he literally we loaded up his SUV twice, and I'm upstairs, as you know, and he br he parked in the back, and he brought everything in those two cars up here himself, because at that point, I had already developed laryngitis. We were wearing masks because, well, the virus was out there, but we hadn't been ordered to wear masks or, or anything like that, but his wife was concerned about him getting sick, being around me, so, he told me just to, once I came up, just to stay here and he would bring everything up and he did. And I, what an angel, oh my gosh. My late bloomer angels, it's been incredible. The generosity of my friends. And that's what this video is, is uh, dedicated to, is friendship and how much friends mean to me and all of the help that I've gotten. Because there's been so much to think about I haven't been thinking about my plants in Lake Bloomer Garden 1.0. I know that they're being watered and that they're all still there. One of my followers suggested that I get a Meyer, a dwarf Meyer lemon tree for here. I don't know that that's a wise decision. The upside of having a curfew is that it's much quieter at night. But nobody wants to have a curfew, and nobody wants violence, and nobody wants any of this stuff going on. I am trying very hard to uh, put a smile on my face and try to inspire other people in spite of all of this. And I've actually been very surprised that I've been able to make as many videos as I have. I've kind of lost count of how many I've made, but when I think about the first five years of this channel, 2012 through 2017, I made two videos a month. 
And now I know that sounds ludicrous now because everything changed. Being able to do thoughtful videos where you really go back and you pull footage that you shot a long time ago and you compare. I did a little bit of that in the last video and you, you finish that and you turn around and you gotta be doing another one. So it's, even though I have tons of ideas about indoor gardening that I can share, a lot of people are writing me going, I'm so glad you're sharing this because I have a very small space and many people do. And I wanna encourage everybody to grow in whatever space they have. Uh, so I have been pushing myself, more so than trying to make my apartment livable. <laughs> it's barely livable. <laughs> in addition to all of that, my mother is, her health is failing. I've read these stories about people losing their parents during the uh, virus crisis and not being able to have a funeral and not being able to be together as a family. And oh, it's just heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. I'm just hoping that she can hang on. Every time I talk to her, I said, I just want you to hang on <laughs> till I can get over there. I have plans to go. Hi, Lyndon. Uh, you might be wondering how Lyndon is. Come here, come here. Oh, I haven't cut her nails, so I'm gonna have to be very care careful. She doesn't like to be picked up very much. Um, but can you say hi to everyone? Isn't she pretty? Now she is, she was a, her mother was a stray. And uh, she looks like some kind of purebred cat. She's so beautiful, but she's not. Okay, she's going down and I'm brushing off the cat hair. <laughs> I'm gonna be staying somewhere that's within driving distance of my mother and just kind of wait and see uh, if I can get in to see her. I did get a complaint from a resident. This is someone that I've known since before I moved here because he's a very good friend of my friends. And he was very nice, but sound really travels in the, uh, in the Rose Alley. And because this complex does not have air conditioning, people have their windows open. And I was out shooting my last video. Um, I think I started about a quarter till eight. And he, he told me that he I woke him up. And I said, I was talking very softly. And he said, oh, I know you were. I know, I know, I could tell. But still everything travels and so, um, now it's even more challenging. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, I'm not thinking too far ahead um, because, you know, the reason, the main reason that I would stay in Los Angeles is for acting. I'm still an actor. Of course, nothing's happening and hasn't been happening for a while. I have to decide whether I want to stay here for the the hope, the, the potential of work, which I would still like to, very much like to do, uh, or um, just go to my homestead somewhere and just create my own homestead no matter what size it is. That's something that I'm going to be looking at uh, during my trip. Now that this apartment is, is starting, to, starting to get to feel organized and to feel kind of homey a little bit, this is what I felt all along and I would love to keep this as my uh, Los Angeles place and have a bigger property with a great garden somewhere else. After all, almost anywhere else in this country, gardening is from March to October at the most. Have my garden somewhere else and come back here in the winter. I mean, you know, there could be worse things. So <laughs> the two things that have made this a great experience and taken my mind off what I had before and just thinking about what I have now and what I may have in the future are my plants and my friends. You know, of course I have the support of my family, but those are all phone calls um, because I haven't seen any of my family members since um, March, April, May, yeah, three months and a week. <laughs> 
and I'm kind of jealous of the people that during this stay at home, you know, they actually have a family like downstairs. The whole family's there, you know, the husband, the wife, the two little kids. Over there, husband, wife, two daughters. In that way, it's been hard just being alone. And not, uh, so I really look forward to seeing friends and family as soon as I can. Thank you so much for everything that all of you, all of your prayers and good wishes and it's really made the difference. I couldn't be more filled with gratitude and humbled by your uh, patronage and uh, friendship and love and prayers. So thank you, God bless you, and um, take it away Kay. Thanks so much for watching this channel, liking my videos, and especially sharing them with your friends. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Well, first of all, you're going to notice some very... Right over my head. Where was I? The battery died. Where was I? <laughs> Where was I before I interrupted myself? I was talking about something very important. I guess that's what pandemic means worldwide. Pan, Pan American. Remember Pan American Airlines? It rubbed in, it soaked in, it's, it sank in, it, wait, what's the word? If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video.